So open our Bibles then, Mark's Gospel, chapter 7, and we continue our consecutive journey through Mark's Gospel. As we uh, continue to worship God, let's pray together. O oh, blessed God, Father in heaven, how we need Thee, how we need Thy voice, need Thy Spirit to help us. Help the preacher, help us all. Grant us ears to hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Bless us and help us. In Jesus' name, amen. In Mark chapter 7, there are three great collisions. Jesus collides three separate occasions. Um, If you were here last time, which must have been a fortnight ago, we saw uh, Jesus uh, on a collision course with the Pharisees. Why don't your disciples wash their hands? I mean, that's what everybody does. If you want to get to God, if you want to be godly, you've got to wash your hands. And it was all external, and it was all show, and it was all sham, and it was all the promotion of tradition and the relegation of the Word of God. And Jesus collides with all that. He hates hypocrisy. Well said, Isaiah, you hypocrites, worshipping with lips, hearts nowhere, And so he collides. Uh, It's not the outside, it's the inside that counts. A clean heart. And Jesus here declares every food clean and every heart unclean. Just a few words. Um, Food cannot make you unclean. Uh, Verse 18. And he saith unto them, Are ye without understanding also? Do ye not perceive? This is his disciples. Whatsoever things from without entereth uh, uh, into the man, it cannot defile him. There's nothing from outside. Because it doesn't touch the heart. Because it entereth not into his heart. But from within, verse 21 how the heart comes filth. Every food is clean. Every heart is unclean. I mean, that's just a consistent message of God. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There are none righteous. No, not one. And so the Pharisees could never accept that. And so this great collision, Jesus collides with the Pharisees. Well, a second great collision in chapter 7 is, is that Jesus collides today with our culture. According to our culture, the prevailing view that we live, up, live in young people are brought up in is that our greatest need is to find our true identity. Don't be bound by culture or upbringing or parents' beliefs. You've got to find your true identity. And it's that push that is destroying so many young lives um, who had male or female on their birth certificate, but now they're thinking, that's not me. I've got another identity. We are what we sing in part. In 1994, A lot of you young people weren't even born then. But in 1994, uh, appreciating that this is now 2021, don't don't define our culture by what we sang in 1994. Um, I know you're saying that, but hear me out. But in 1994, M people sang, I'm not going to sing, you've got to search for the hero inside yourself. 
people had been singing that beforehand. You got to search for the hero inside yourself. The lines continue, look inside until you find the key to your life. M People, 1994 has been been released by others since. The same views have been sung and continue to be sung. Currently, just to show that I'm up to speed, um, just a bit of name dropping, Adele, I I know nothing about Adele either, I just read this in, in Google, but anyway, Adele has recently released Uh, This great single, I mean, it's popular, it's downloaded in the hundreds of thousands. Go easy on me. Well, what's that song about? It's, it's, uh, It's about a woman who confesses she's messed up her life. She's made mistakes. I was married, I had a children, I was a mum. But I've, I found my real identity now. I found the real me. I was young and immature. Go easy on me. It's the same mantra. It's just we've got to find our identity. So whether it's M people in 1994 or Adele now, all sorts of forms. But our culture's heartbeat is find the real you. Search for the hero inside yourself. In Mark 7, verses 20 to 23, Jesus collides with that. Jesus says, that's nonsense. So if we, as our culture tells us, to search for the hero inside ourselves, let's have a look inside ourselves. Verse 20. And he said, that which cometh out of the man, that's human beings, it's anthropos, male, female, boy, girl, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within and defile a man. So, do you really want to search for the hero inside yourself? Do you want to let that out? Is that what you want to express? Give freedom to your real you? You want to let that out? I mean, does that sound like the key of your life? So what's wrong with our society? Why is there so much evil in our society? So much violence, murders, marriages destroyed, young people ruined by pornography. Why is that? Well, it's because we're unclean. It's because that's what's within us, and that's what comes out. And that's the only reason for the reason that the mess our society is in. Verse 18. He said to them, are you so without understanding also? Don't you perceive? Um, Verse 14, after he dealt with the Pharisees, when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, hearken, that's that's really, listen. Oh, every one of you, understand. If you don't get this, you'll get nothing. There's nothing from without that's going to make us bad. We are bad within. We're rotten to the core. It's no use searching within yourself to find a hero. You search within yourself, you will find sin. As one has said, 
The great problem, the heart of the problem, is the problem of the human heart. The soul of mankind, male, female, boy, girl, every inner thought of every human being is evil. Our society is not going to be fixed by encouraging everyone to search individually for the hero inside them. So first of all, in Mark 7, Jesus collides with the Pharisees. And secondly, in Mark 7, Jesus collides head-on with our culture. Our culture today, as much as he collided with it 2,000 years ago, you know, in many ways, we're comfortable with that. And that's okay, isn't it? Jesus wants to collide with the Pharisees. Yeah, that's not us. Jesus wants to collide with the culture. Well, that's okay. I mean, we can talk all day about putting the world to rights. I'll tell you what's wrong with the world. We need different politicians. We need this, that. We can do all that. Or if we're very spiritual, we can say, look, I'll tell you what's wrong with the world. It's sin. People need Jesus. Yeah, amen, amen. But that doesn't really impact on us. You see, the third collision here in Mark 7 is the collision. It's when Jesus comes and he collides with us. I mean, this is personal. I mean, you can talk about the culture all day long. You can talk about them. But Jesus comes to you and I this morning, friend. Verse 21, for from within, out of the heart of men. That's us. You know, we're human beings, out of our heart. None of us accept it. That's, that's us. It's you and it's me. And Jesus is not describing them. So I wonder if you recognize yourself in verse 21, 22, 23. I mean, do you look at that and say, but I don't think so. I mean, is Jesus talking about me? I mean, surely I'm better than that. He's talking about you, friends. You know, sometimes we talk about the benefits of seeing ourselves as others see us. I mean, we don't like it, but it's, we can see some of the benefits. It's painful at times. But this morning we're confronted by Jesus Christ. See yourself as Christ sees you. Out of the heart. That's the center of our thoughts, our emotions, and the, the very essence of our being. Out of the heart of men, all men, human beings, all of them. Evil thoughts. William Hendrickson, in his commentary, helpfully, I think, he posits a, a, a colon after evil thoughts. So all the rest are evil thoughts. And there are 12 of them. So we, they don't all lead to action. We don't all end up convicted of murder. But these are thoughts. Without being overly detailed, the first six are plural. Uh, the authorised version plural, uh, gives plural to a few of them, but the first six are plural, and the rest are singular. Uh, there may be something in that. But it's evil thoughts, plural. That's, that's what's going on in the heart of men and women, your heart, my heart. All these thoughts. You live long enough, you'll have had them all. And it's not a praise sight. In Matthew 15, uh, Matthew gives his account of this. It's a short list, but it's still a pretty filthy list. J.C. Ryle comments on this passage, thoughts are the parents of every word and deed. You don't do something until you thought about it. And out of the heart, 
all these thoughts. I mean, don't you cry like the Apostle Paul? What a wretched man I am. So, I mean, look at the list. It's not pleasant. Coveting, fornication, deceit, an evil eye. That's a very literal translation of the Greek. It's envy, really. Just, it's a, it's a wicked eye. It's envy. Blasphemy is not, um, includes blasphemy against God's name, but it's, it's just uh, evil words against anyone. Pride. I mean, his disciples were full of pride. That's why when Jesus was talking about, I'm going to the cross, his disciples were talking about, who is the greatest in the kingdom? <laughs> That's because they've got evil hearts. Perhaps you disagree. You know, Jesus says, out of the heart of every one of us come evil thoughts. That's, that's some of the things we think about sometimes more often than others, but that's what sin, that's, that's, that's what it is, it's sin. Maybe you disagree. Well, if you disagree, friend, I'll leave you to argue that with Jesus one day. But Jesus knows it's fallen humanity. It's what happened to us in Adam's fall. Oh, our, how sad our state by nature is. So, and there's a great collision with our culture and with ourselves. Our culture tells us we're essentially good. And we can believe that. And then, and then we believe that Jesus comes and he just makes us a little bit better. But we're essentially bad. Jesus comes to deal with all of our wickedness and make us new. And if that's not your understanding, then Jesus collides with your understanding this morning. And his Holy Spirit will come upon you and collide with you until you change. Until you agree with the verdict of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. Why? Because Mark 7, 21 to 23 applies. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Why? Mark 7, 21 to 23 applies. That's God's verdict. Verse 14, hearken, understand. It's not the outside, it's the inside, it's your inside. Verse 16, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. So do you hear this morning, friend? Are you hearing the voice of the culture that says, search for the hero inside yourself? You're essentially good. You just need to reach your full potential. Are you hearing that? Or are you hearing God? Don't you understand, he says to the disciples, what part of Jeremiah don't you get? Jeremiah 17, 9. Don't you understand that? The heart of man is deceitful, deceitful above all things, desperately wicked. What don't you understand? He must have said to his disciples. He never read the scriptures. That's our state. So how do we fix ourselves? You know, the way that people try to fix themselves, um, insulate and educate. So that's the usual go-tos. And as Christian parents, we, we, we default to them. Christian parents, we insulate our children, keep them from bad company, wrap them up, uh, insulate them from the wicked world. And don't, don't get me wrong, <laughs> Bad company is not a good thing to have. But don't overdo insulate. You cannot insulate your children into the kingdom of God. Uh, 
Insulation, insulating your children doesn't change the heart. It's all outside. And so the other way is that we educate. So we educate our young people with Christian values. We make them good. We give them a good education. Uh, we give them therapy if things go wrong. Anger management. This course, that course, that therapy. But that doesn't work. You cannot educate your children. You cannot educate yourself to the glory of God. You cannot educate anyone away from verse 21 and 22. And so the other option is, well, let's transform ourselves by work. Self-improvement. That's the way work and work. But don't you understand? Haven't you read Isaiah 64, 6? We are all as an unclean thing, all our righteousness as our filthy rags. We can't fix ourselves. We're in a mess and we can't fix ourselves. Jesus collides with the Pharisees. Don't, don't think you can clean yourself up on the outside. Jesus collides with our culture. Don't go looking for the hero inside yourself. That's not your true identity. That's not true humanity. That's messed up humanity. And Jesus collides with our false understanding. Where we sort of say, praise God, Jesus has come to make us a little bit better. <laughs> you cannot fix your evil heart. Search for the hero inside yourself until you find the key to your life. Nice tune, rubbish words. And I apologize, if you know the tune, you're going to be singing that all day long. It's not going to do you any good. So where do you go? Well, you go to search for the hero outside of your life. He's called Jesus Christ. He is the key of your life. Verse 21 and 22, whether you like it or not, describes you, it describes me, and they challenge us. And in those verses, Jesus collides with you. Or rather, you collide with him. You know, verses 21 and 22 describe every human being, bar one. They don't describe Jesus. Jesus is perfect humanity. You've got to search for the hero outside yourself. And perfect humanity is never found within us. Perfect humanity is found in Jesus Christ. There's a day coming when we will be transported from this world, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, and we will enter into glory, into the company of just men and women made perfect. And there'll be no more sin. And the descriptions of verses 21 and 22 will no longer apply, because that's true humanity. And, you know, our culture's partially right. We need to find our true identity. Our true identity is in Jesus Christ. Only he is perfect. If you search for Jesus, you will find him. And those who search for God will find him. We need, as the reformers Affirmed, we need an alien righteousness. That is what he meant is we need a, a, a righteousness from without ourselves. We need, you know, we can't fix this heart. You cannot do anything. You cannot insulate from the world. You cannot educate this, world, this wicked heart. You need a new heart. And Jesus comes and he, he, he gives us a new birth, a new heart, a new creation. And we need we need a new birth. We, we need a new heart. We need a new creation. We need a resurrection unto life. And all of that is given in Jesus Christ. You cannot polish 
the evil, fallen, sin-filled human heart. Verse 21 and 22. That cannot be polished. That's a Pharisee's way. And our children don't need to be insulated or educated. They need to be translated. We all need to be translated from this evil world and come in repentance and faith, acknowledging that Jesus' verdict of our heart is correct. You look into yourself, you'll not find a hero, you'll find a wicked heart, an evil heart. That's the language of Jesus. And you need to acknowledge that and come to him and cry to him for mercy. We don't need to educate our children to be better sinners. We need to educate our children about our glorious Savior, Jesus Christ. We all need to be educated. We cannot fix ourselves. Jesus Christ comes in Mark 7. He collides with the Pharisees. He collides with our culture. But most importantly, he collides with you and me this morning. And we need to respond. One of us is wrong. You know, either you be here, we're wrong about how good we are, or Jesus is wrong about how bad we are. You know what? I, if I was a betting man, I would say that Jesus is right, because he's God. Save yourself by yourself from within, or be saved by Jesus Christ from outside. Search for the hero inside yourself, really, or search for the hero outside yourself, Jesus Christ, who comes to us in all our fallen humanity. I mean, he knows. He knows our frame. He knows what's going on in our hearts, the thoughts we have. And yet he still comes and he gives his own new birth, new heart, new creation, and a resurrection unto life everlasting. Give up on yourself, friend. Look unto Jesus and be saved. Amen. Father God, help us to look away from ourselves unto Jesus Christ. God, man, perfect, help us. We might seek him and live, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Five hundred and fifty-four. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus, blood and righteousness. Dare not trust the sweetest frame. Holy lean on Jesus' name. May we all do that this morning. Let's stand and sing his praise 554.
Father God, we pray, impress these truths upon us. There is no other ground than his blood, his righteousness. And part us, Father, every one, knowing the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit of God, now and forevermore. Amen.